Finally, we are getting to hear from Tracy Braxton's husband, Kevin Surratt, in a new interview with Sherelle's World. Let's break down some of the most important parts, including Tracy's will, Kevin Sr.'s relationship with the Braxtons, and some of the misinformation that has been on the show. Welcome back to the Kempire Channel, your number one source for pop culture news and music, entertainment, reality TV, and so much more. As always, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on breaking news when we go live or when we upload. So a lot of us have been waiting for answers, and I know Kevin Surratt Sr. has been on his social media giving some of those answers as to what's not being said on the Braxtons. If you haven't seen it, we have been recapping all of the episodes of this new season of the Braxtons. So we have been unpacking and giving grace, not just to Kevin Surratt Sr., but also to the sisters. But it did take a little bit of a turn these last couple of episodes because Tawanda and Trina said that they refused to have Kevin Surratt Sr. share the same platform as them because they allude that he did not respect Tracy's last wishes. Well, according to Kevin Surratt Sr. in this interview with Sherelle's World, he's saying that's just not the truth. As always, guys, we are going to cite our sources, so you can definitely head on over to Sherelle's World and see the full interview. I'm just going to go through some of the points that stood out to me and play a couple of clips. First off, let's just talk about this Georgia move. I did not even know this, or maybe I didn't remember this. I don't know if they mentioned this during Braxton Family Values years ago. That's a lot to go through. But he mentions this in the interview that they all moved down to, to Georgia. They were given a home only to be left there, and then he had a he had to get another job and, 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 and pay for his family to get back to, to the DMV area. Take a look at what he said. My time being with my family, um, it definitely brought, you know, wrenches. Say, for example, we moved to Georgia for like two years. And I was, uh, you know, kind of, it was a picture was painted. And the picture was, you know, we're moving down there. Uh, I'm gonna sell my house up here. We're gonna move down there, and they also gifting a house to us. I'm like, oh wow. So Tracy was saying, yeah, the house is gonna be gifted to us, and we're moving down there. And also, we know people that can help you get. You know, I was knew a lot of people in our area, so I always was able to get jobs. So when I got down there, the narrative was totally different, and uh, it just threw me, you know, off. And then Tony went to Vegas, so. When Tony went to Vegas, everybody went with Tony, which left Tracy down there by herself. Oh. And I had to take on it. Yeah, she was by herself. And wow. I had to take on a job back home so that I can move my family back up to the DC area. Wow. And so throughout the interview, there are multiple times and he reaffirms what we already knew and what we've seen Tracy say on Braxton Family Values is that she felt, not just because of what happened when she got pregnant and being, you know, left by by their sisters for this group. Yes, we know that narrative was out there. Tawanda says they didn't leave their sister. However, your sister Tracy felt like you guys did not support her. Not just with that, but multiple times throughout her life. He reaffirms that. And he was with Tracy. He literally says when he met Tracy, it was just when Tony, Tony wasn't even a big name yet. She had just did the, the Boomerang soundtrack single. So that was even before she released her debut. So he's been in this family for a long time. He's been with Tracy for a very long time. And he's literally still grieving. And he's, he talks about that in the interview. Let's move on to the next clip. Because one of the other narratives was the reason why Kevin Surratt Sr. did not get the executor of her will was because he was always bad with money. Well, this is what he has to say in regards to that. In the care field for always. So I always work. So the bad with money thing that came out, it was like, you know, I'm going to take care of the home. And that was just my job. And, you know, Tracy, you know, she would contribute to the pot and we would just, you know, manage things that way. Bad with money. I would say we both were, you know, we both had our valleys and peaks with that. And I think if you're in a marriage or in a relationship, you have your learning curves. 
So we had to learn from that. Uh, as far as the estate, uh, I believe that there was some, uh, how can I say, I, I just want to say the word manipulation in that situation. If you look at the numbers, uh, Tracy, December the 20th, I think December the 14th, I think is the day that she did. The, Tracy was at the highest level of medication at that time. And I don't really think that doing a will during that time was the right time to do a will. And then on top of that, they tried to catch her, catch her when I wasn't there. So I worked. I was still working during this process. So I was happy the family was there. I worked the overnight shift at the VA hospital. And unfortunately, the will was executed during that time. And Are you oh, okay? <laughs> So he claims that he feels like the family was manipulating Tracy while she was, you know, dying. And he says they, they intentionally tried to meet with her in regards to have these kind of conversations while, first of all, he says when she was very, very sick. Because, you know, if you've been watching the Braxton's new season, they've, they've said that she was in her right mind. Miss Evelyn says she was in her right mind. Tawanda says she was in her right mind. However, when you read the will, it's still, even even if... She was in her right mind and she was in her right mind. The will proves that she was okay with a funeral. She just did not want these organizations that she was involved in to do anything for her, even though she was entitled to that. So the will still, even, even if he believes that she wasn't in her right mind and the sisters do believe, she, the will still proves that Kevin Sr. was in, in the right that Tracy was already plotting and planning her own funeral. He talks about that in the interview as well, that she forced him to meet with, with the funeral uh, organization, the funeral director, in order to plan out those particular details. And they, they did have a small private funeral. He talks about that as well. But let's first talk about the Zoom call that had, because some people are wondering, well, Tamar on the show said that she didn't know about Tracy dying. She was the last to know. Um, before Everyone knew before she did. But according to him, according to Kevin Sr., everybody was on the Zoom call. I don't know if Tamar was. He says that everybody was on the Zoom call. So I also uh, told Tracy we got to let the family know because I wanted her to have support. And so I set up a Zoom call. I contacted uh, Tony through a text message. And then we in turn uh, set a Zoom call, and everybody was on the Zoom. Uh, and we went out to let them know what was going on. They said if there was anything you know they can do, let them know. Uh, this was around about December. The holidays was coming, December 15th, 16th. The, uh, the holidays was coming, so I wanted to make sure that she had all the support that she needed to get to, we had, I should say, to get through this process. So start pouring in uh my mother-in-law came in town so i don't know i'm gonna give tamar grace in regards to maybe she meant something else maybe she wasn't on the zoom call but according to kevin senior he says everybody was on the zoom call when they when they knew about tracy being sick and that you know she was not doing well all right so a lot of you have said based off of watching the braxtons you feel and sometimes I feel that they are manipulating Kevin Jr. Sidebar, he does talk about Kevin Jr. You know, there were rumors that Kevin Jr. was getting mixed up in, you know, the wrong things, you know, because of what he's been going through. I didn't realize that Kevin Jr. and Olivia have been together since they were like 14 years old. And it's just a reminder. I know they've gone through their drama of a lot of stuff happening. Apparently, they've resolved a lot of that very recently. I didn't realize that they were together that long, but this is just a reminder when people go through grief and the, and the loss of someone, it does have its effects. She also had to deal with, she had a, a young child. She also had had Kevin Jr. having seizure, seizures. Some people are just not able to, to deal with that because you're dealing with your husband now grieving. You're seeing a completely different side of him now that he's lost his mother. So he talks about that in the interview, but he also talks about how close was Kevin Jr. with the sisters when Tracy was alive. 
And we've talked about this. We've said, at the end of the day, everyone wants to make it seem like Tracy didn't love her husband and her, her son. And it wasn't just them up in, in the DMV while everybody else was living their lives and had forgotten about Tracy. It, it was just the three of them. He talks about that. How close was the Braxtons, the Braxtons with Junior before Tracy got sick? Twenty percent. So a lot of people have been slamming to Wanda and, and, and everyone that was there that could have been a support system. Trina could have been a support system for Kevin Jr. when he had a seizure while filming the show. And it clear it was clear that he was uncomfortable going back to the hotel by himself. And no one offered to go with him. No one offered to, for him to stay with them. So a lot of people are pointing that out. So a lot of people also feel as if the sisters are just using him so that they could utilize the footage of Tracy in her last days, use Tracy's image, continue to use Tracy's image in this new season of the Braxtons. Okay. All right. Kevin Sr. in this interview with Sherelle's World also talks about how Tracy, multiple times within their decades and decades long relationship, did not feel supported by her sisters. And he was the one that was there for all of that. And he thinks that's probably why they have such an issue with him. I agree with, you know, like, you know, a lot of stuff that were taking place. Like, I don't understand why Tracy wasn't getting the support that she needed in, 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 in his area. You know, like she did Blues Alley. You know, that was huge for her. The only one that showed up was my brother-in-law, and I thank God he did a duet with her, So, and it was beautiful. But that was like a milestone for her. So all of her things that she did, you know, it showed that you just, you're just you not supporting Tracy, and, and she's supporting everybody and their adventures. And, in, you know, sometimes off camera and things of that nature, and I don't know if that's a driving force, but it goes back, you know, years, decades that, you know, they, they did everything they can to try to divide us. And um, I, I just would tell Tracy what goes on with us. It's important that we balance it to the best of our ability. Now, me. He says that they forever tried to divide them as a couple. Everything that they, they tried to do. So now that Tracy's not here, like he, the, the picture that he's painting, again, this is his side. But the picture that he's painting literally makes more sense now that we're watching it. Of course, they're not going to have him on the show. He does mention in this interview that he signed a contract. He was ready to film, but the sisters refused. They protested that they would not, they would not do the show if, if they had brought Kevin Sr. on the show. And he says that happened before. Tracy experienced them protesting against her. All right, so there's more in regards to a lot of people that are been that have been against Kevin Senior have said, well, Tracy didn't leave him as the executive of her of her estate because she, she didn't want him tricking out her money with other women and things like that because she's cheated. But those of you that also watched Marriage Boot Camp when they were on it said Tracy admitted it of cheating as well. Well, he reiterates that in this interview. Me and why they had a problem with me, I don't know to the day. Because, I mean, if they say it's because I uh, cheated on my wife, if you watch Marriage Boot Camp, Tracy clearly sat beside me and said, we both had infidelity. We both went through that process of healing from the infidelity that we went through. But another thing I took on, Sherelle, if no one, like you guys have been married for decades, mm -hmm. I wasn't letting nobody come into my marriage on my part if you hadn't stood on those grounds. I'm sorry, you can't come in and talk yeah. about a situation and you haven't even lived it. Myself and Tracy lived it, no matter good, bad, and different. We lived it to death did us part. So I don't get caught up in those narratives and I, I, I bat it down, excuse me. And, and look, we've said that too. No matter how people feel, she stuck with this man. And I think part of why she stuck with this man was that they went through the trenches together. They had their ups and their downs, but they did it together, especially because she felt so alienated from her family. 
maybe if they came around her and supported her differently, maybe she wouldn't have stayed with Kevin Sr. But they didn't view it that way. They felt like we got to X him out, but they still weren't supporting Tracy the way that she wanted to be supported. And I know it's very easy right now to paint a new picture the way that they want to paint that picture. But there's video evidence of Tracy saying, no, you guys did not support me. This is how I felt about the way you treated me. All right. So the will. So as we know, the will has been exposed on social media, but he does talk about the will extensively in this interview with Sherelle's World. As I said before, guys, if you're new here and you're unfamiliar, we always cite our sources. So I will be citing Sherelle's interview. Go over there, go give it a view, go give it a like and drop a crown and elephant so she knows who sent you. Anyways, let's get into this will. It was 10 minutes after she passed, 10 to 15 minutes. I need to read something to you according to the will. Where did you do that? I'm on the phone. Pause. So he says that he received a phone call from Tracy's attorney or the family attorney. We don't know. He doesn't name the attorney. I'm assuming it's the same family attorney that we saw on the Braxtons. And we already told you how cringy that felt that they had Kevin Jr. there. Literally, they're using this to paint the narrative to make Kevin Sr., the villain in their story. I said that during our recap. I'm saying it again. So he's saying in this interview that he received a call minutes after Tracy just passed. Minutes. And he reading something. I was like, I don't even know what it was. Because I was, I just like, that was my wife. Just the behavior I started dealing with as soon as she passed. An hour after she left, I mean, an hour after she um, uh, passed, I was in the room for two hours by myself with my wife, waiting for the funeral home to come. Nobody stayed with me. So uh, I I just look at stuff like that, and then that, that I'm getting this call. Then the next day, saying it's going to be a Zoom call. I'm still processing my wife's death. I'm not even, you know, really talking to people. I'm trying to process. Then I got to take care of my son at the same time. And all I'm getting is, what you going to do? What's going on with this? Blah, blah, blah. No, su not supporting the process. So let's go back to your initial question. We've been out. Uh, we knew what she wanted. She wanted one viewing. One viewing. A private viewing. And we set that up with the funeral home that she had put in play. Tracy made me talk to the funeral home directly when I didn't want to. So the funeral home director came to my house and we talked privately. And she said, this is what Tracy wants. I kept telling her I wasn't there yet, but okay. So I executed everything that Tracy wanted from the private viewing, which was set up for my in-laws at the funeral home that my father-in-law had used for his mother, father, brother, sister, and other family members on the Braxton side. So one thing about this funeral home, they know all the Braxton. So then this narrative came out that my father-in-law wasn't on the list. My sister that you talked to, she was my coordinator. She knew my father-in-law. She was at the door. Her and the funeral home director knew my father-in-law. You still there, Sherelle? You froze. Okay. So all this stuff that's taking place is just really, I feel like trying to just kind of disturb me in this process of grieving my wife, but I was working through it. And so I worked through it and then I was able to make sure everybody was good. Now my father-in-law and brother-in-law did come in to the private viewing. And this was the last time we had Tracy's body. And she was beautiful that day. Me and my son made sure she looked excellent for her final viewing. And we also FaceTimed my mother-in-law, sister-in-laws, and I all had them on the phone and they saw her on FaceTime and said she was beautiful in the initial looking at her. So the private viewing, we had everything set up for everybody to come in and there was a no show. Now, I expected to have them for that, the private viewing. So he says, first of all, in the will, it did say that Tracy left it up to Kevin Sr. and Kevin Jr. to manage what she would look like 
at her funeral. Again, the will is saying that she did, in fact, want a funeral, a small private viewing. He does later say in this interview that Tracy and he always celebrated their birthdays and celebrated each other in very big ways for many years. The family didn't always come to those things, but they always did. Again, I told you, the family left them up in the DMV, okay? It was just the three of them. So part of the reason why he wanted to do that big, beautiful celebration of her life is because that's something that they would do, and he felt like that's what his wife of 30 years deserved. But let's continue to hear what he had to say. It was a no-show. I had that rose sign from my mother-in-law, sister-in-laws, and I all had them on the phone. And they saw her on FaceTime and said she was beautiful in the initial looking at her. So the private viewing, we had everything set up for everybody to come in. And there was a no-show. Now, I expected to have them for that, the private viewing. It was a no-show. I had that row set up, so a lot of people, I had security there, so a lot of people wouldn't bother them, you know what I mean? Because it's not the time or place. So I made sure I invited people who understood that, you know, and they never showed up. And they never showed up. He's talking about the private viewing. We're not talking about the celebration that we saw. So, because uh, at the celebration they had they had her, uh, you know, cre you know she's cremated. They had the urn there. Kevin Jr. was there at that celebration. I have to say the interview was eye opening. He deserved a platform. I still believe he deserves a platform on that show because We TV has millions of people that that show has access to every single day. However. We will continue to talk about it and continue to say he deserve a plat deserves a platform. He does not deserve you guys trying to make him into a villain. Is he innocent? No. He admits that he hasn't been innocent. But he also says, you know, Tracy wasn't innocent either. And we believe that in a relationship. But these two, to the day that she died, were still married, still committed to each other. And I believe still loved each other. I don't see anything wrong with him having a celebratory celebration of the woman that he loved and rode out with. Meaning like they, they, when they had nothing, they were together. When they had a little something, they were together. He says that when she was going through depression because of being treated the way that she was being treated by her family, they were together. And it was just the three of them. He is in a better place with his son. We've talked about that in the most recent recap here on the channel. He, he's in a better place. He literally says after, after this interview, he's going, he's going to see Kevin Jr. And he says, you know, Kevin Jr. Is, is working through what he's working through and he needs to go to grief counseling. He's going, Kevin Sr. is going to grief counseling and taking care of his mental health. And he wants the same for his son. But he and Kevin Jr. are in a better place, which is great. Would have been probably even better and a lot sooner if the sisters were not interfering. And the mother. Because, Miss E, I don't think you're innocent either. Especially because you are. You should be the voice of reason. You should be the one telling your, your daughters, this is not it. We need to make sure that he's included. We may not like him or like the things that may have happened in his relationship. He needs to be there for his son. We can't be there 24-7. He is in Maryland. He can be there for his son. We should not foster more dividedness in their family, especially because they weren't divided before. He did talk about, you remember in uh, not this past two episodes, I forgot what episode it was, when Kevin Jr. met with the attorney and says that, you know, I was, I was born into this family. You married into this family. Kevin Sr. does talk about that. He says he did not like that statement, but he understood what his son was trying to do there. And he also understands that his son doesn't understand the full situation when it comes to their fa his father and this family. And he says he sees the Braxton name as more powerful. So that's part of the reason why he said that. And I can see that. And I'm sure he sees what the sisters have done and how they treated his mom. And he's just like, I don't want them to treat me like that. I don't want to be isolated. 
it seems like they have a lot of access to stuff. I need access right now. I'm losing my house. I'm losing my family. I lost my wife. And I just lost my mother. He's in a, a, a very, very sensitive place right now. He feels like he's lost everything. So the fact that the sisters might be showing him a little love going from, you know, not really having a relationship of 20 percent to now showing a little bit of love does feel manipulative. I hope that it is truly genuine and that they're really trying to support him. But it's hard to believe, especially when we just watched this week's episode. He has a seizure. They, they show him laid out on the couch. You don't see his face, but you see him laid out on the couch. You all are executive producers. All the sisters are executive producers. This is your family. What you could have at least said, we could just put it, put up that he, you know, he, he was ill. We don't need to show it. But look, no one's perfect. Guys, as always, I want to know your reaction to this new interview with Kevin Surratt uh, Sr. on Sherelle's World. As always, we will be citing our sources in the description. Let's continue this conversation in the comment section. As always, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on breaking news when we go live or when we upload. Thanks for watching. Ooh, you bring the lighter. I got the fuse. You make a fire.